Hello, hi guys, welcome to day 196. Thank you, thank you so much. Kobawa, Anyo Haseyo, Sawadi Ka, Bama Hauda Jia. Thanks for the likes, the comments, the encouragement, and I hope to encourage you guys as well to stay healthy, continue to exercise, and eat healthy as well. Well, today, yeah, if you can see my description, slightly sad. Not just slightly sad, I am sad, but in a sense, it's a bit numb to the shooting because it's so often. But let's talk about it over exercise then. Okay, so it's about. 7.15 So 30 minutes of cardio exercise So it's like 7.45 So I'll, I'll stop this at 7.45 And uh, yeah, today is the workout for my legs So today we do the strengthening exercise on my legs and stuff like that Now, uh, let's talk about today's topic You know, um, again thank you so much guys for watching If you are watching to support me or something, thank you, thank you so much. Domo arigato gozaimasu, honto arigato, gamsa hamida, shishie to jai gamsia, salama, kopun kap, gam en, terima kasih, nandri, tayabad, istuti, danke shun, mesi buku, gratis, muchas gracias, spesibo, obrigado, and thank you, this is thank you. So thanks guys, CC Dimenso Khan. So let's talk about today's topic. Um, okay, before that, before that, I need to just say all these statistics first so I keep it on the record. Like I say, I'm doing all these videos for me, for accountability, sick to account for my own actions and health. And at day 196, I have traveled 2,083 kilometers and burnt off 66,430 uh, calories so far. Okay, so talking about, talking about accountability, it, it's sad, it's sad news that these few days we keep hearing shooting after shooting after shooting. And I was looking at Wikipedia before this because I got friends, not that they'll be affected directly, um, but I got friends of course in US as well. And sometimes I do worry for them or pray for them that you know, be it natural catastrophe or something, or in this case mass shooting that happens so often in US that it becomes it becomes almost numb. I don't know, it almost felt like it's just another news. I know it's life loss, it's very sad no matter what, okay, but it's just that it's so common until like it's part of their normal life. And that's very sad, and that's very sad. And the irony is this. Um I was looking back, okay. Before that, I was talking about Wikipedia, right? So if I was looking at Wikipedia and say man shooting in USA, guess what? This year alone, this year alone, they have plus the recent ones over 250, 250, 250 man shooting in 2019 in US. I mean that is ridiculous. But that becomes a norm in a society where it's so divided. And again, I don't want to touch into politics, but. It's more their policy on gun control, which is ridiculous. And the NRA, the National Rifle Association, basically the one in charge of like gun control and stuff like that are, you know, pushing back because they believe everyone has the right to have gun, to, to, I'm not everyone, I think, people who are certified to carry them and stuff like that. So they need to be more regulated. And unfortunately, yes, politics does play, come to play, and how their gun control works and stuff like that. Now the thing is this, I was looking back at my old pictures because it reminds me of the time, twice, that I went to USA. And it so happened that those two times that I went to USA is in August, which is this month. So two years ago, I was in uh, California, uh, the western part of USA. So I was in California, uh, I went there for a business trip, went there to be trained to service camera for one week and then the subsequent week is my holiday so me and a new colleague, because of the new colleague as well we went to certain places which I'll explain later so we went to Las Vegas so we kind of like tour around that area, we went to Death Valley I wanted to go and see Death Valley because you know the nature and stuff like that it's beautiful, we don't see that kind of landscape in Singapore at all So I went to Vegas, I went to the Nevada desert and did my own tour Now, the thing is uh, The first night we... No, the, the, the first time we reached Vegas two years ago 
it was at night. So the following day morning, we were on a tour. Uh, I almost said tour. We were on an event, not event, sorry. We went to a location to do a specific activity because my new colleague, who is actually about 15 to 20 years older than me, much more senior, insists on going to that. So I kept like, okay, tag along. Okay, I paid the money and went. And guess where it is? Yes, it is to a shooting range. I'm not encouraging or neither do I like military or war. I'm, but although I must say, being Singaporean as a male, having gone through military training, it's the training part that changed the mindset and make you to be more responsible and kind of like grow up as they say, boys to men, you know. I know it's very cliche, hence that's, that's why we got that Jack Neo movie. But what I'm trying to say is, the training military part of it, it's, it's good. But I, I never liked the idea of military in a sense that I never liked war and stuff like that. And any weapon that goes around it. So I ne was never into it. So when my new colleague back then was saying, Hey, let's go Vegas, they actually have a shooting range. So I kind of helped to research and find, and basically we booked this um, range. So basically it's indoor, okay? So at first I thought it was going to be outdoor, but no, it's indoor, okay? So that's number one. Uh, we chose World War machine. So since I'm really there, I might as well take a look at the actual gun that they have and stuff like that. So I got to shoot with a wood gun, a gun made out of wood. Um, not entirely, of course, inside the chassis is metal. So it's a World War One type of gun. So I managed to, I mean, they will give us a few and we can choose. And so the package I chose has, I think they shoot three types of gun. And it was in a shooting range. So it's indoor, it's controlled, there is instructor. But the scary thing is this, looking back, or should I say, thinking back at it, the scary thing is, uh, so I'm just gonna keep up the tempo of the music. So the scary thing is, I could have died there, and no one would know, or you could have been killed inside there easily. What happens is, it's a shooting range, right? So you have different people, strangers beside you, literally beside you, shooting at about, I think, five or six rows of, of shooting range. So my colleague actually, uh, he chose um, a, a range of weapons to, to play with the shooting and he actually add on some more so he has more things to shoot. I only chose the most basic ones. But we chose the World War One gun. So the gun are like authentic looking World War One. Again, I'm not uh, encouraging or uh, neither am I for war and military seriously. But like I said, I'm doing this partly because he wants to go and I thought I want to bond with this new colleague and he's 20 years older than me, so he's more senior. So I thought, okay, I'll give him face and he insists on going, so I'll tag along. Yes, it is quite experienced. Gun itself, or should I say a projectile, you know? Don't say that it's a weapon. If you say it's a projectile, from that point of view, scientifically, engineer-wise, mechanically, that's interesting to me, okay? But not as a weapon. Not as a means to kill someone, okay? But uh, traditionally, humans had weapons. Yes, it's deep into the history of like weaponry and its war, but it has been used for good as well in the sense that uh, I'm not bringing out this case as if like, <laughs> I'm again pro-gun, I am not still. But it's just that traditionally, gun has been helping hunters to hunt for food uh, or to, uh, to defend themselves from wild animals. So back then, you know, people, or even now actually, people who live in the rural area, they do need gun. I know a friend in Malaysia... Wait, is it Malaysia? Uh, actually, I can't remember, but I know a friend in a rural part of the village or something, they do have gun because more animals do, do, do appear. Well, actually, it, it is East Malaysia. Okay, anyway, so I can't say who, but... Anyway, so, yes, gun is for defense. Defense against wild animals. But in US, it seems like people are carrying it to defend against other people. And so, there's like something gone wrong, you know, like people are not trusting, people are crazy, or they, again, it's be it the racism or whatever is dividing them, or politics. So, gun becomes actual weapons against people. So that's a sad thing, that's a very, very sad thing. So like I said, two years ago, when I was in US, Vegas, we went to the gun range and the shop were dead. Uh, but I, like I said, I could have died because, not say could have died, but actually I could have, there's another incident, okay, I'll follow up with this. So, in the range, no one 
is wearing any protection, okay? There is no vest. I don't remember carrying or wearing any vest. You go in, okay, give you the gun, the instructor will teach you how to shoot it, and basically you shoot. And you have the ear plug because it's very loud. And because it's in indoor, so the sound will reverberate. I think the soundproofing is not the most fantastic, but even if it's fantastic, the people beside you who are shooting off the gun is so loud. Literally, it's better you use the ear plug, otherwise, you, I think you'll go deaf. So, what happens is we shot, and uh, any imagine if there's some psycho there or insane people inside that indoor range, they just had to turn around beside me and just shoot and that's it, we are dead there is no protection okay and there's no separation between the strangers that's shooting beside me so there is that le level of risk for sure is that level of risk so that's number one and then after that trip in Vegas I came back to Singapore one week after exactly about one week after uh, the mass shooting in Vegas at the concert happened and I was like oh shit and look at the map where it is literally it's only 6 minutes drive from my hotel so if I had extended my leave for another week stay in Vegas I might have wandered there because it's a free concert I'm not sure it's a free concert but I know it's a concert so it's something exciting or you know like wow concert USA huge lights and, and, and glamour and whatever so who knows I might be there at that location and they should of course that didn't happen so this is all speculation but it's just that to think that a week after I left in a location so near my hotel there's mass shooting and people did die at the Vegas shooting so all this shooting that every now and then keep happening and the recent one that happened which, which is my heart goes out to them especially those who passed away because of protecting their kid you know I think now you guys have seen the news by now like parents who died kids to protect their child or, or some other shoppers at the Walmart that was killed so that's super sad and it's all racially driven killed by white guys so again I'm not trying to incite anything racial but that was what happened and that happened within the same day where there's two other shooting to another shooting and I think another day ago was yet another shooting so that's why I was saying if you look at Wikipedia they say this year alone USA this year alone has over 250 plus shooting already so that's pretty ridiculous now, the irony also, not irony, the crazy thing was, let me see. The first time I went to USA was in New York, New Jersey, and that's the east side. So just now I'm talking about in California on the west side. So actually, first time I went to USA was six years ago, 2013. So it was also in August, because I was looking through my photos like, hey, what coincidence? I don't know why. And the time I go to US is in August. I'm not sure, is it because of the weather? It's autumnish, right? I think so, yeah. So maybe no, no. It's actually their summer. It's still in their summer. So I remember I went to the Vegas in the Death Valley. They say a week or two ago, before that, uh, it was the hottest summer ever. So literally, I went at the worst time to the desert, and it's really, really hot. Way hotter, like in the sauna, worse than sauna, because it's not just non-humid. You'll be evaporating so much. I like, keep drinking lots of water, and it's just scorching hot. Seriously, you keep wanting to come back to the van and hide because. That's it, there's no shelter. So anyway, I was just saying, six years ago, first time US, New York. And I heard of crazy things about New York. I have seen crazy things. And I was at Madison Square Garden, the train station, waiting for a friend to pick me up, which is a terrible idea because New York traffic is a killer. So he was driving from New Jersey. We were staying at New Jersey, actually. So he, we, we actually had, um, we actually got into an accident. Yeah, let me tell you about that. We got into a small accident, uh, but not with a person, but with a picket railing, and it did damage the car and cost us money to fix it. Damn. Anyway, so what happens is, uh, in New York, I was waiting, waiting there for my friend because of the traffic jam. He could only arrive like almost one and a half or two hours later, and then so, um, what well, was literally standing outside Madison Square Garden's train station. I've seen so many hobos, they literally call them hobos, homeless bozos, basically the homeless now. Okay, sorry to use that word, it's actually very, very bad. So, basically the homeless, or the destitutes, or again, just strangers on the streets that they, you can tell they're homeless for the way they dress, and some of them like try to solicit things from you. So, just me standing there, there's already a few who came to me. There's one black lady, oh my god, I still remember. She 
came and said, Oh, I'm having a baby, this is yours or what? She's like, huh? I'm like, look at her, she's like, ridiculous. So I try to pretend like I don't understand what she's saying. Because I'm Chinese, Chinese looking, right? So I can pretend like, oh, I'm not American or something. So she was saying, like, claiming, oh, this baby is yours. I'm like, what? Really crazy. And then there's this other homeless guy who was sitting or standing beside a few, a few steps beside me. And then he just was really strong in smell of alcohol and urine. So some other youngster came along and gave him, I think it's not a good wheel, but giving him more beer. So it's like, really? Homeless needs beer? Maybe they need more shelter or food, other food or something, or money, you know? So they, they gave him a six pack. I don't know, they say they couldn't finish it or something. Who knows? Is it lace? Is it drug? Who knows? So they gave six pack to this homeless guy. And then again, within that one hour plus, police came, took off some homeless off the street. And I remember there's one other lady, I think it was Caucasian looking. She pretended that she's in pain and, and like fell to the floor. No one cared about her. And I could tell it's a it's a it's a acting because she was looking around and then acted pain. So this kind lady passed by, saw her, and was like, wanted to tend to her. And then she just kept shooting her away. I don't know, she's like acting there for something. It's not like a, there's an actual shoot or something, but she's trying to, I think trying to lure tourists. Because the local America was like trying to, she, she, was, she came to her and like, said, oh, are you okay? She like just pretended and like shoot her away. So you can tell she's like faking it. And then this lady was like, oh, so, so disgusted and then left also. So yeah, within that one hour, so many shit happened. And uh, like I said, the worst is that black lady that said that that, that baby is mine. Like, what? So, so I was thinking like, oh shit, man. And again, that was not just a year, but years before the US mass shooting and stuff like that, Columbine, many, many years ago. Ever since then, almost every month, every year, there'll be mass shooting all over the US. And in New York, there was shooting, of course. So I was thinking, oh my God. I shouldn't have stood there, I mean, something could have happened if there's a mass shooting, literally I'll be in plain sight. So, yeah, that happened. And I was traveling alone because my friend was, uh, I, 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 I was there because I tagged along my friend's business trip. So that first time in US, my friend went on a business trip. So we stayed at New Jersey. I had to take a train ride from New Jersey to New York. So, uh, yeah. And I, do, I did meet my, my uh, ex, um, my junior college classmate because she was at that time staying there and so she did she did let me stay I think one night or something at New York, in New York itself so that's pretty cool so I did have a taste of New York life and ate at New York City and meet some friends and some new friends and met my, my classmate there as well so yeah shit literally can happen there but like I said bringing back this whole topic about the menstrual thing is just super sad and <clears throat> love USA for their culture, but just yes, there is that level of weariness and scary uh, feeling if shit does happen, you know. So thank God, twice that when I was in US six years ago and two years ago, uh, both in the East Coast and West Coast, nothing happened to me. Although it was so near, like I said, the shooting in Vegas uh, was literally after one week after I left, and so. Yeah, so, so I kind of like count my blessing, like, like thank God, you don't have to face any of those, like I say, this, this kind of consequence of shooting or, or whatever. But again, my heart goes out to those who are affected now. And if, again, as long as our gun control is not changed, there'll be still more. Unfortunately, there will be somehow down the road. Um, again, with the current racial and, and political divide, it's just going to get worse actually. Anyway, okay, so much for that. Sad news, bad news. Second thing in today's uh, description, as I mentioned, is about baking goods. And so, uh, yeah, today I baked someone's new stuff. Uh, I baked a plain, no chocolate at all, a plain muffin. Um, can you see it's muffin? Yeah, it comes with a muffin. And it's like no yolk or very little yolk because I use egg white, beat it up almost like a, almost like a meringue. And put flour, baking powder, and a bit of the syrup. I did uh, palm sugar syrup, and it came out quite bland. <laughs> it's actually quite bland. So and uh, it has some taste. It's not like it's totally tasteless, but it's like that's vanilla extract. But the vanilla didn't come through. And then uh, I did put in some peaches as well. The peaches that I soak in yumeshu. So I keep wanting to think like, oh, maybe 
the sweetness might be imparted into the muffin? No, it did not. So it's like a bit of a waste using the Yume Shu Shou soaked peaches inside this muffin. But the muffin did turn out crispy and crunchy, uh, not crunchy, crispy, crusty on the outside. Inside it's too soft, thank god it's too soft, so it's not very tough. So it's quite moist. And so what happened is, uh, got to eat it with my buttercream that I made the other day. So yeah, fine. You know, it's not as tasty, it's not as flavorful, but it's a like plain, normal muffin, like very plain no muffin, and it's like light brown in color. So unlike the muffin that I make, that I used to make, uh, the strange thing is, yeah, when I first started baking, I already started using chocolates. So a lot of my baked goods already has like strong chocolate taste or other kind of fruits taste infused in them. So this is like almost the first time since I started baking, like two, three months ago, that I make an original non-flavored muffin actually. But it's a good thing because it becomes like a vessel which is good for soaking up, soaking up all the other goodness of other uh, buttercream sugar buttercream that add in or other sugar syrup or caramel or even chocolate so probably I may make some chocolate ganache so that I can coat this muffin or dip this muffin into chocolate and just eat it so so yeah it's a good thing still you know use it as a base B-A-S-D as a base to soak up all the different kind of flavors all right my heart rate is 120 like on the dot so it should be 120 to 130 for 30 minutes so so far 35 minutes has passed, 10 more minutes left, so about 2-3 more songs. Anyway, and on the side I did bake, and now it's like cooling down, uh, flan, F-L-A-N, basically it's just egg custard. So egg custard is actually very simple to do, but it's my first time learning that, oh okay, it's actually very simple to make the caramel coating on top for the egg custard. It's literally 2 parts sugar to 1 part water, microwave for 2-3 to three minutes, that's it. Your bubble out, caramelized brown. It's so simple, like, okay, actually caramel is quite simple to do. It's just like so simple to do, you're just burning the sugar to get the caramel. You can put it in a pot, of course, but I I just realized after I looked at a video recently, like, microwave will just do the trick, and you don't have to wash, because you can use that as the vessel, to then put in the egg custard and steam it. So I steamed it. It turned out not very pre pretty on the underside, but we shall see after turning around because I did strain it so for the first time I strained my custard in the past I didn't strain my custard so custard has bubbles so this time I strain it so you remove all the large clumps of eggs or egg white and uh, also called reduce the bubbles so after steaming it the bottom the upper half that was exposed is very wrinkly <laughs> not very appetizing looking uh, I mean yeah so I let it cool it probably will fall down and we will invert and open it out so let's see how it turns out so my first time making caramel, creme caramel, in other words is like, not cream, because I didn't use cream actually. I use soy milk, I use yogurt, yes yogurt, oh wait, did I use yogurt? No, more yogurt. So it's just soy milk and, and egg. So it's basically like a traditional Chinese custard. And so, yeah, let's see how it turns out. So first time making this um, caramel custard, <laughs> let's put it this way. So I saw, I was just inspired like I say, I saw so many ways of making custard and flan, F-L-A-N. So like French, or is it Italian? That's flan. Flan is like, or, or, or I was looking at Vietnamese food. So Vietnamese appa apparently is um, influenced by French, right? Colonial, colonial French. So they have this thing called bun, flan, flan bun. B-A-H-N, if I wrong, bun. If I wrong, bun refers to something Vietnamese or something like that. So anyway, uh, I need to go and search. What does bun mean? So we have this uh, flan, F-L-A-N. So basically, in essence, it's a custard. So now like trying to... Because I always love custard, seriously. It reminds me of young, that's why. It reminds me of young. It reminds me of when I was young, where there were times that I didn't have the money to eat or I didn't get enough money from my mom. Like literally when I was in primary school. So I have only one dollar. And back then, a dollar can get you an economic rice with steam egg. So I remember not wanting the rice and told the uncle like the economy rice seller saying that give me one dollar worth of steamed eggs and I was so happy it's just that I was so happy that like, oh my god a large portion of steamed egg and I just eat it like for lunch so, not that I'm poor but neither am I say I'm rich but I remember that day I didn't have enough money I only got one dollar left so so that was like 19 
1990s to 1995, around there. 1990s, when I was around 10 to 15 years old. Uh, yeah, primary school. Yeah, primary school. So, I had $1 worth of steam egg, which is quite a, a large portion back then. So, it's like I was so, so happy. That's my earliest memory of a happy, happy with food. Other than McDonald's, unfortunately. But, yeah, you know, when you're a child, McDonald's, Happy Meal and all this literally ingrained into us and hence we have this bad habit when we grow up still of wanting to eat fast food and, and, and that's why for the longest time people are saying or business has been saying McDonald's are not selling food, McDonald's are selling experience so when we were young, we were brainwashed with that experience of Happy Meal, the playground, the birthdays and all the gatherings we had, school School gatherings even, yeah, I was in McDonald's, I remember. School literally organized a gathering there. And um, schools uh, uh, project with my friends. Classmate is always at fast food restaurants. So yeah, I was brought up with this feeling, feel good feeling about being in a fast food restaurant. And when you're in a fast food restaurant, of course, you tend to eat all the fast food and all the stuff like that. So that's how I accumulate all my weight and bad habits because uh, yeah, it's, it's that brainwashing young. I don't blame fast food per se in the sense that it's a business, but I do say that their strategy to target kids is so effective. It brainwashes kids in not, not understanding what is healthy, good food. I mean, it's not saying the business fault. Obviously, a lot has to do with parenting, but I can't blame my parents because they are busy at work. So. You don't have very good family kind of health education thing going on. You know, I do know of families where you do not allow the kids to eat as much fast food and everything is healthy. The mom or the dad cooks healthy food. And so they're brought up in a culture, in a family of eating healthy and understanding what is not healthy and to moderate what they eat, you know. But I wasn't like that. I'm one of those, I guess, typical kid, fast food. You know, you have the money, fast food, and and, and it costs, like I said, it's, it's like a special thing since young because fast food is not the cheapest, but it's like so addictive. And so that's the thing. Unfortunately, that's how we are brought up, uh, a lot of us. So thinking fast food is good. Not say it's good, uh, but it's that sinful food that is irresistible, that gives you that good feeling of eating it. I don't think so anyone will go to a fast food restaurant hating it. And after eating a fast food restaurant, hated for eating the fast food, I think. If you are, then something is wrong. Like you hate it, but yet still you go eat it. Then you either can't control your body, or the fast food restaurant is like has something to your head or something like going to shoot you or going to kill you. It's like hey, you better eat, otherwise I will, I, I will murder you for it or not. It's like no one's forcing you, right? But fortunately, the reach of advertising since young, the brainwashing is strong. As you grow up, you have that feeling. So I'm so glad I feel that as I grew up now in later half of the year, the later half of the year, later half of my life, you know, almost nearing to mid year, mid age, so called mid age, uh, forty, um, I woke up to this realization of hey, enough is enough, get rid of all this junk food and fast food. Seriously, it's not doing yourself any service. Again, to each his own. I understand. If your health, your genetics, family history of medical and stuff like that is good and you can still eat your fast food, good for you, I'm envious that means maybe your genetics or somehow you are able to balance it and your body is able to take the high sodium or high calories or high you know, fats content inside fast food but again, not everyone is that lucky, right? not everyone has that good genes to be able to just process all this kind of food and fast food and still be super healthy everything has a consequence Anyway, talking about consequence, two more minutes, and we consequently gonna end the 30 minutes of fun size, uh, not end of fun size, 30 minutes of my cardio, which I'm now clocking about still 120, okay, uh, roughly 120, 21, up and down. So, I don't know, my heart today is like very stable, <laughs> but it's not working harder than uh, normally I, I would. Uh, at least I'm still cycling above. 17 to 18 kilometers per hour. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you so much. Oh, Rick. Hi, Rick. How are you? Hi, Vincent. Hi, Danny. Thanks for viewing, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys, for watching.
and for your support. So like I said, uh, I guess trying to summarize, kind of like today what happened. Uh, other than knowing the news, the sad news of the shooting that still again happened again and again in USA. So my heart goes out to my US friends or anyone in the world that's facing such issues of mass shooting. And like I said, not too long ago, the mass shooting also happened in New, New, New Zealand. So been to New Zealand, Christchurch, Auckland, yes, once and it was a very short trip. I think it was only within a week or something or two, one week. So it's a very, very short trip. So I didn't have much recollection of my time there, although I went there with a uh, god uncle. And remember I saw, we saw this, we saw this immigration center or, 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 or organization. And the name is exactly the name of my god uncle, literally the exact name. So like, I, 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 okay, so for his privacy, I, I can't mention, but his name, Immigration center, something like that. So, what? It's the same Chinese character, someone. So, it's like, you were like joking, saying that, oh my god, I didn't know that you started an immigration center in New Zealand. So, basically, yeah, that happened. Too bad, we were in the city area. So, in New Zealand, they are more famous for their mountains. And, like I said, the Hobbit was shot there, uh, the Lord of the Rings. So, I didn't get to see the nature of New Zealand when I was there for one, uh, only one time. Hopefully, sometime in the future, I have a chance to go and visit New Zealand and literally travel the, the, the rural parts where there's all the mountains and sea and coast and all the waterfall and stuff like that. <laughs> Hope you guys can share with me more of your story as well if, uh, about what I think of the shooting or what I think about New Zealand, USA and food in general as well. Okay, Yokata! Woo! It's 7.45, actually 7.45. Let's do our leg exercise. Okay. Don't stop because later on my heart may be coming back soon and I don't want to disturb him. So that's why I have certain timing that I want to finish doing my exercise. Okay, so today is lower body. Uh, let's do some stretching, including my hips. <laughs> yeah, I know every day is like sitting down, sedentary. Uh, really need to exercise and move about more, you know, like your joints and in this case, even the hip as well. Because my hip is always like, you know, in a sitting position, so that's not good. So do need to rotate a bit more and ease the tension. Okay, the funny, funny song. Collecting junk with Temi. It sounds more like this is like a... What's that? What's that? Disney film? The one with the cute little robot that collects junk in the beginning. <laughs> you guys remember? Okay, let's start. Okay, wait, let me just do a bit of stretching as well. Okay, we'll just do the calf first. Two, three. Wait, let me push it down because the rest of the exercise will be more on the grip floor. Go to these legs. So, must just show the legs more. 30. Okay, I'm going to try this now because I remember I, I stopped doing this particular exercise because it's like it hurts my knees. So now I'm going to see if it works better. Looks like my knee problem slowly kind of like went away. 
Cause a few, about a month ago I think or so When I was doing that particular exercise My knee will hurt quite a bit, like there will be sharp pain Okay, maybe, maybe it's getting better already Or it's like, it's healed or something So, let's do this Two Three Four, this is like a more advanced lunge So it's working one leg like much more extreme Six I don't overdo, I'm gonna do 10 for now because I already can feel the strain here and also on the knees. The, my whole body weight is literally leaning on one side of the knee at a time. Okay, today let's do 10 first and then next few, next few weeks you know, to come, I mean, as I progress, I'll try to do increase the intensity. Again, still conditioning my muscle, so I'm not at a stage where oh, I'm like working out to build big muscles. Not yet. You know, 18 to 20 years that I have not exercised since. My muscles are in a, not a very strong state So let's take it easy first To get my muscle condition and used to this exercise Before I, I don't know, load with more weights or something Three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, hi Kenny, yo man, how are you? Are you feeling better? Are you recovering well from your flu or something? Take care, man. Nine. Ten. You know, today I was watching Ancient ancient Aliens, uh, the TV series, and they're talking about flu. Seriously. They're saying that humanity in the past had an epidemic of flu so bad. It's called the Spanish flu back then, I think 1800s. And in India, Bombay, and in Europe, at the same time, and at that time there's no air travel yet. But at the same time, in history, these two regions had a flu and killed millions of people. Seriously, that's crazy. So they are proposing that possibly panspermia, you know, through asteroid or comets, and they found that virus can can actually survive in outer space has been possibly sent to Earth Again, it sounds like a crazy theory but they say it could have been sent to Earth to wipe out humans like to cull, to control human population or whatever so that's a possibility but yeah, they're talking about that flu which is quite crazy man killed millions of people back then in the 18th century Okay, yeah, I lost count, never mind Let's do 10 more One Two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. What do you say, Kenny? You're saying thanks, man. Same team. Sama sama. I think it's possible. Yeah, it's true. Anything is possible. Like me slimming down. That's possible <laughs> And it works But I realised that these few weeks It seems like it's getting my trunk get thicker I'm not sure is it the fats or is it muscle I'm really not sure It feels like it's get thicker But you can see the lines are there really slowly You can see this dimple here, this is the dimple So this part of my fat is going down And this part of my torso After eating of course this will be bloated But I don't know, hopefully this might eventually become some kind of muscles Again I need to build my muscles around the abdomen To support my you know, slip this uh, spine issue So yeah, look at that There's some definition here Look at that, there's this line here <laughs> So I think that's crazy I can't imagine that I'm doing this like If you asked me a year ago Or even a few years ago Like five years ago I'd be telling you crazy I would exercise I would not go diet and stuff like that But guess where I'm at now? I'm dieting and getting healthy And I see more and more friends every Now and then In, in no social media They also like taking care of their health Doing exercise, uh, changing their diet and stuff like that. So yeah, good for them. Oh my god, this song, the sign. Hey Kenny, do you remember this song? Remember we danced the junior wait, were we in the same junior? Yeah we are! We, we danced the song, remember? The junior college song? And then we're like one, two, three, four, and then we jump two, two. Something like that, I remember there's a dance to, to this song, the sign. <laughs> Ace of bass. 
Oh my god, nostalgia. Do you remember that, Kenny? So, yeah, the sign. So maybe this is the sign. The sign that you need to keep fit and stay healthy, you know. Five, six. Let's go, let's go.
doggy peeing, apparently it helps with some part of the other muscles on this side of the leg, so let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Tonight, that's it guys. Uh, wait, I finished all the exercise, right? Uh, don't get the photo. Yeah, I'm like a dog. <laughs> you know, one of those dogs with long hair, curly like this. <laughs> I'm a dog. Anyway, thanks guys so much for viewing and thanks for your support. As usual, please take care of your mental health, internal health and physical health. Uh, sleep well. Rest well, stress free, and eat well, okay? That's very important as well. That's how I started. Change some diet. Okay, so that's it tonight. Uh, done. Fun exercise. Yes. 196 days. Four more days since day 200. Oh my god, time flies, huh? So, anyway, take care, guys, and uh, we are Sumina Sai. Uh, good night. Salama Malam, Salama Tidu. Wan Shang Tao. Wan An Lo, Tazia. 谢谢你们收看 ，OK， 拜拜，再见，再见，拜拜，再见，拜拜，再见，拜拜，再见，拜拜，再见，拜拜，再见，拜拜，再见，拜拜，再见，拜拜，再见，拜拜，再见，拜